What's up guys, this is Aaron from B-Sign. Today we have here another 2013 to 2015 Lexus RX with factory navigation. I know the last time we did one of these video was about a year, maybe a little bit more. We made some changes to our device. So I wanted to do a, another new installation video and also demonstration video. The installation sign is going to be exactly the same, but the operation sign might look a little different uh, because we added some new features. I wanna go over that too. So I'm just gonna make it a very thorough video. So we're going to cover the installation and demonstration. Uh, we already started on installing this. So we have some of the panels apart, but I will still explain to you how I removed them and how I got to the bolts that we need to remove. So let's go inside the car and let me show you how everything's done. Okay, so we already removed a bunch of parts in here. If you wanna see the details of how it's done, then you can watch our video from last year. But if you're just fine with me explaining things, then here we go. We have this dismantle. We remove the, the panel that surrounds the top screen. But uh, so to remove the top screen panel, use a panel removal tool like one of these. You need to pry it out from the bottom, also to the side, and pull it from the bottom and pull it out. And now after that, we're going to remove some Phillips screws. One, two, and three. So we got three screws. And also how to remove the center console, just uh, twist off the shift knob. And then you can actually just pull this up, pull this out. Make sure you change the gear down here so that it'll come off easily or it'll get caught up here, okay? You can also press this release, shift release to change your gears to push it down here to make it easier to remove this. And then this one, just place your finger here on the left, just pull it down. And there's a panel here, it's gonna pull it out. And then going back to the right side, there's a panel here. You just pull it out. And after that, there's two 10 millimeter bolts, one and two here. You have to get down and look up, okay? You have to put your head down on the floor and look up to see both of those. One's gonna be facing side, one's gonna be up. Same thing for the driver's side, there's gonna be two 10 millimeter bolts. You have to get down under and look from the bottom up, put your head down, okay? So once we remove those four 10 millimeter bolts, you will be where we're at now. All right, so next step, let's remove the Phillips screws. All right, so we'll remove the three screws. Okay, here's one, one on this side. Careful not to drop these, okay, because you can easily lose them. And one on the left. Okay, let's remove this. Just place your finger here, let's pull. Move it up, and we will disconnect the connectors behind the screen. And then let's pull this out, push down on the release lever, move the gear down to make more room for the screen. And place your finger here, Oops. just pull it towards you. Okay, and this will expose all the connectors back here. And just as a warning, be very careful with this GVIF connector here. It doesn't have anything to do with our kit, but any sort of strain or, or pull on this cable here will cause your factory screen to blink and flicker. Okay, this one. So when you're putting things back, make sure it goes back exactly how it was from the factory. If you move it around a bit, you even like put some strain on it, you put some pressure here, it'll make your factory screen blink and flicker on your factory OEM native screen mode. All right. Okay, now everything is out. Let's do our connection. We're going to start from connecting the two GVIF cables from the top screen to the center. Okay. Okay, I'll bring these two cables out from the side. I'll just push it down below. All right, so our previous video shows us removing the glove box and today we are not going to mount it down there behind the glove box but instead we're going to just mount it behind the radio down below there's a lot of room back there but always caution there's always more risk of breaking things if you go down here just because you will have to maneuver through all the cables and wires and you have to be very very organized to do it okay so just a precaution there just be very very careful when you're mounting the boxes down here um, as opposed to behind the glove box and down towards the kick panel. So I'll leave it up to you how you guys want to install it. But if you want to be more careful, uh, you can and take the additional steps 
please uh, remove the glove box and you could mount it towards the center console and you could refer to the older video for that. But today we are going to install it behind the radio down there and I'll show you how to do so. So once again, if you decide to do it, be very, very careful. Um, on the connection points, do not make sure there's no additional pressure going into the pressure points, especially the where the GVIF connector connects and then the, where the um, HDMI connector connects because if you do, you end up breaking the boxes. It's very, very expensive to replace them. Um, so be very, very careful and just know that before deciding to mount it behind the radio. Well, let me get my screen back. So the only connector we're going to be like this is our screen is going to be this new GVIF cable here. Okay. And then we have going to connect, put this factory connector back on. I'm going to slide it back to its original location. All right. In the meantime, We'll let it sit like this and let's connect our main connector here. This main connector is going to be pre-configured for you already. The CAN wires are going to be pre-configured, but if you want to double check, the red GS cables are going to be connected to the white and the orange cables and the brown RX will just connect to each other like this, okay? And we will locate, let's locate the connector is this big one right here just press down and then pry up like so like this okay let me loop this around make a little bit more room go got all that connected yeah, let's put this to the side for now we're gonna keep that area open okay, now we're going to connect this okay so for this particular vehicle we the dip switch could be 178 you have a tag here that also tells you the correct one just in case you end up switching it off or changing it while you're installing it so just confirm that your dip switch configuration is correct and let's connect this here, like so. And let's connect the GVIF cables. Let me reroute it. Uh, try to not cross wires or tangle things up. GVIF in is going to connect to the outside and GVIF out will connect to inside here. Next thing is we'll connect this HDMI cable, okay. And let me organize these wires, zip tie them. And then let me also insulate this with some insulation tape. Okay, when you're adding this tape, there's vent holes here and here. Make sure you don't plug them up, okay. If you plug them up, you can potentially overheat the boxes, so. Be very careful of that. And let me organize these. Okay, next, let's connect the our CarPlay module. So before we connect the CarPlay module, one thing you'll notice in this video that we're missing is the is our auxiliary connector here. So it, it will come included in the kit, uh, which connects to this, and then the audio portion connects to line out. Our new setup doesn't require that auxiliary harness anymore because we're routing all the audio through the car's Bluetooth. But if for any reason you want to use audio from the car's auxiliary AUX mode, then you can connect it, okay? You can connect that, which connects to here. If you want to double check your wiring diagram how everything connects you could check the instruction manual to confirm uh, but we don't use that source anymore um, we don't uh, it just works much better using the car's bluetooth for the audio source so for that reason we're not gonna 
connect it. If you're going to use it as the kit is supposed to, then you don't need to connect it. But if you want to use the auxiliary to route your audio through it, you will have to change the configuration on this device in the settings. Um, and then you could do so by installing the auxiliary harness or connector in this kit. So keep that in mind. So we're gonna do it without the auxiliary harness. Okay, let's, here's our power, goes to power. Microphone connects the mic in. And then the USB connects to USB. And the antenna connects here. And then lastly, the HDMI connects here. So after all that's connected, we see to um, organize everything, our cables, wires, insulate this, make sure you don't block the vent holes, mount it back there carefully, and then reverse order everything we did with that will conclude the installation. Oh yeah, we also need to route our USB extension cable. We're going to route it into the glove box. For this customer, we're not going to use the USB um, adapter to utilize the factory USB to work with a wired Android Auto or CarPlay. We're not going to use that. So instead, we are going to route a separate USB cable here. If you're going to use, be using the USB adapter that connects here, then here's the correct connector. It's all the way in the bottom. All the way on the bottom, second row right here. It's right here. It's the gray plug here. So unplug this and then plug it into our USB adapter. And then the other side of the USB adapter is a USB-A, which will connect to this box here, okay? So, but we're not using that adapter today. All right, so let me organize the cables, um, route these cables, and then continue on with the install. All right, so let's first route this USB here. I'm gonna go from back here. Yeah, should be an opening. A good catch. Just up, just like that. And place this back in. Here it is, right here. And then let's route the antenna. I'm gonna route it all the way to the left. Go to the driver's side, I see an opening there. And after we route it towards the driver's side, we will tuck it behind the panel. Okay. Let me just leave this here. Let me just first mount these two. Okay, so when you first turn it on, you will get black screen for a little bit. Just give it some time and then you'll see the Lexus screen pop up. All right guys, we just finished installing this kit, our S-Connect plug and play Android Auto CarPlay interface. And let me show you how everything works. So the, all the factory functions are retained. You don't lose anything. And in order to get into CarPlay or Android Auto mode, all you have to do is press and hold the map button, It'll take you in. We already set up our phone, that's what it's showing. And once you pair your phone to our device wirelessly, when you turn on your car, the device will automatically launch now. This is a new feature that we began rolling out in April this month. Um, so depending on when you purchase the product, if you just purchased it, most likely you have this. If you purchased it before, you don't have that feature. Um, if you wanna know how to update it to that, just let us know, we can send you the instructions and the files to do so. So once we're here, um, let me go over some functions. So you press down on the screen and you could drag around like this. It's the easiest way to move pages. You can also go to the map application you could move it around like this. You could do this on Apple Maps. You could do it on Google Maps and also Waze as well. All right. 
And if you have an Android Auto, it works the same. It's just the screen looks a bit different because the interface is a little different, but but the um, the gist of it, it's, it's the same. You'll be able to use applications that's safe to use while you're driving. So you're not, you're not gonna be able to watch movies, watch Netflix, YouTube, and all that, but you'll be able to use the map application, the phone apps, the music apps like Spotify, Pandora, and navigation and so forth. So that's that. You can press the menu button to summon Siri. What's the weather? It's currently clear right. at 78 degrees. And if you need to go to your reverse gear, it'll show up even while you're in CarPlay mode. You go out of reverse and it'll take you right back to the CarPlay screen if you're using CarPlay. And if you wanna make phone calls, you can easily do so. And then you can hang up. You can also use the steering wheel controls to pick up your phone call, hang up the phone call. You can also change the volume up and down. Up, you can also change the volume up and down and then track up and down from the steering wheel control. All that controls continues to function. You can also use a track up and down from the, the factory stereo panel. If you're gonna go back to the factory infotainment system, you can by pressing and hold on nav. And then there it is. This is your native Lexus screen. And just, and to go back to the CarPlay or Android Auto mode, just press and hold the map button once again. So our system actually loads very, very fast. Um, a lot of times faster than the time it takes for the Lexus infotainment system to load. So right now the factory infotainment system is still loading. You know it's done loading once it takes you out of this screen. But if you press and hold the map, look, it's already, CarPlay's already up. So very, very fast. All right, guys, well, that concludes our installation demonstration video of this 2013 and 2015 Lexus RX with factory navigation. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or you can email us at info at beachsonicusa.com. And if you're ready to install this or get this installed in your vehicle, you can purchase it directly at beachsonicusa.com. And if you haven't yet, help our channel by subscribing and liking our video. Thank you very much for all your supporters and I'll see you guys on the next video.